Hi, my name is Chrissy Clements. Everyone watches accesstv.org. <laughs> Another series of Education One. Today we have Hyacinth Yeti back a month ago that she actually told us a great deal of information going on in the Harvard school system and actually what's going on in news and education. And this week we're going to explore some of the things that Hyacinth Yeti actually does within the community. She's actually head of the head of the NRZ on Maple Avenue, one of the most powerful ones in the Harvard area. And uh, she's, a advo she's an advocate of actually within the political world of the Hartford area or the Hartford district. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Sam, for inviting me back. Um, it's Thanksgiving around, huh? Yep, yep, that's so it. So we have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. So let's give God the praise and, you know, thank him for all the good things that's been um, bestowing us. So that's always good. Sometimes we tend to forget about those good things. And mm -hmm. so I just want to, you know, want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. And don't forget that we should always be kind and thankful to each other. Since we, uh, so since we left off last, we talked about a little bit of what was going on in the, the Board of Education of Harvard. Yeah, yeah. We talked about the superintendent. And where are things right now that you know? Oh, uh, okay. So, you know, it doesn't seem like things get any real better okay. um, with the condition of what's going on, even with the board in general. I know there's a, a pretend face out there that everything is beautiful, but, right. you know, behind the silver lining there, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And um, it, it's... Sometimes, you know, you wonder, really, and I, I continue to talk with, with people, and as you know, uh, the staff were told not to talk to anyone, mm -hmm. all right? But since I'm an inside person, I, I'm, you know, I hear all the different story that goes on, and, and it's, it's reality. It's not a pretend story. It's reality. Right. But because people can get out there and tell the real story, they'll tell somebody who they know that they can trust you right, know, right. to to bring the story back out yeah. there. So you're like the Perry Mason of Harford. <laughs> yeah, whichever one you may call it. Right. But the thing is, uh, one of the focuses, and it, and it really bothers me a lot in general, because one person said to me, you know, Miss Yenny, we are not actually focusing on children education anymore. We are more focusing on data. Every day, there's a new data, uh, there's a new instruction from City Hall, from, from the board for us to put some new data together. Now, I want to ask you, how do you put data together when you have no time to actually do the thing to make that data a good or, you know, bad, whichever one you may call it? Right. Because I figure if you want to put data together, you have to put something in place that works. Mm -hmm. Then you can tell whether it worked, yes or no. But for you to just be um, told that I want you to get focused on data, you know, our children of this generation, it's its really sad because, and I always say, um, you know, to people, Craig is much better place to educate your children because I think they got it. Mm -hmm. They know what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. They know the foundation that has to be laid for our children. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember going to one of the board meetings and say, look, we should turn all of these schools over to Craig because Hartford school system is not educating children anymore. And all this hoopla up about how our magnet school is working here and there. Yeah, we bring in these kids from the suburban town who've got it, mm -hmm. got the foundation mm -hmm. to do well. So they do well. Mm -hmm. But I concern about what's happening to our children. Now, the <clears throat> no, let me ask you a question. We've been together well over 15 years really more than that. And our focus, yourself, myself, and a few others, Stan McCauley, um, 
always look at the mission, the vision, and the goal of the low-income kids. Right. We we left Abamowski's uh, era. We went into Dr. Actually, Kishimoto. Actually, we didn't leave Adamaski era. We're still in Adamaski era because she is the product of Adamaski. She's, she's so the she, extension. She's she, extension. Yeah, he left her to mm -hmm. stay in that position to keep up the face work, not reality work, the face mm -hmm. work, to okay. say, oh yeah, we did well, we did well. No, we did not do well. As a matter of fact, we did worse. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, you come into a system where you destroy your teacher first, mm -hmm. all right? Then the second, you go in and you destroy your children. Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, in a different ways and forms, you destroy them. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, we talk about segregation. We segregate them, mm -hmm. all right? And the, the point of Chef versus O'Neill was to desegregate children, mm -hmm. all right? Bring in the suburban kids, da, 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 and everything will be fine. That's not how I see education. Mm -hmm. I feel education should be provided in quality. Um, as, and, I, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I took a couple of kids to the school board meeting, and what was said of those kids, one of them said, I came from New York. I had, uh, in my seventh grade, I came to Hartford, Connecticut, and I was doing that work in high school. So what does that tell you? So when our superintendent go out and say, oh, we're rigor, we're doing rigor, we're doing all these wonderful things. Oh my gosh, how does she know that we're doing all this wonderful thing? When, sorry to say, and I like her a lot, she has not taught in one classroom. Mm. Okay? So, again... How can you say you know what children really, really need? Mm -hmm. Okay? And how do you really say you can educate children when you're not even listening to your teachers? I read some stuff in the Hartford Current that the Board of Education and the superintendent right now are sparring. Is that true? There's always things happening in the background. Right. As I, as I said to you, it's a, we're showing you nice face, pretend face, but behind closed doors, there's a whole lot of stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of when does all the bricks come tumbling down right, right. and how soon it comes it tumbling down. down. Right. Okay? Um, so, but my focus is on education, educating our children. Mm -hmm. Now, I look at education as a partnership with everyone, mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. teachers, and school superintendent, principals, mm -hmm. all right? But when there is so much disconnection between educating our children, some of our teachers, they're so overwhelmed, they have no time to, to reach out to parents. But you know, just recently I told one of my principal, I said, at Harford High, I said, look, here's what you can do to help bring out more parents. Because we just, uh, and last Thursday, we just had this um, wonderful, what we call, you know, welcome, you know, to school mm -hmm. and want to bring the parents in, let's have a meal or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have a few parents, but I, I, I was a little disappointed there was more. more okay. We had more children because right. they stayed at school for the right, food. Right, for the food, All right? okay. So that's okay because the thing I said to um, the organizer, I said, let's do it this way. You let the kids know that they need to bring their parents. Mm -hmm to make this more successful. Right. So after I saw the turnout, I said, well, we can do better. Right. So I make mention to the, to the principal, here's what you're gonna do. You're the top leader. Mm -hmm. Here's what you could do. You talk to each one of your teachers and say, would you connect with five, six, even 10 parents or more if right. possible? Right. Okay? Have a, a relation, uh, build a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And have them saying, come on in any time, Mrs. Jones, I know. So when that time comes for, let's have a, a conference, you know that you'll be seeing Miss Jones there, Miss right. Brown there, because you have that relationship already. Right, right, right. All right? right, right. And he said to me, oh, I said, that does make sense. I said, yeah, that's the logic. You know, when I was going, when my kids were going to school, we have homeroom teachers. Right. So that homeroom teacher were responsible for connect with other parents. When, when you was there at the meeting now, did you talk to the other parents and see how they felt, at least the ones that were there? Oh, yeah. They, they, you know, a lot of these parents, lots of the time they have work. They have to work late at night or stuff like that. But we have a wonderful principal now, and he's open. 
he's just that kind of person that wants you to wants to welcome you in mm -hmm. and that makes a difference mm -hmm. because if you as a principal not feeling welcome you know feeling making everyone feel welcome then of course you won't have those mm -hmm. um that that those parents come in but just to figure out how as a teacher and as again i want to say i know teachers are overwhelmed at times mm -hmm. but if you take the time once a week or right. twice a week right. and call five parents right. and connect with those parents, I think we can see lots of success in getting the parents because high school is different from elementary. You'll have those elementary parents come in, stay in and you know, hang around for a little while, even though some of these principals are not welcome enough. So because of that, parents just drop the kids off and they run. But in high school, it's a more, it's a more challenging thing. <laughs> So because of that, you have to go the extra mile mm -hmm. to figure out how to get those parents in school. I have to ask you, um, before we go to break, uh, in the next two minutes, if you can, or maybe we do it after break, um, the north end of Hartford. Yes. I used to live in the north end. My concentration is the north end, and that's the most high visibility area of actually failure in Hartford. Um, I see that they have... You know, they're doing some revamping of schools, you know, spending money here, spending money there. Is that helping the north end of Hartford? You know, it, 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 you know, people might say, you know, this is right, this is wrong. But, you know, the way I look at it, mm. you, could, you could be in a shock mm. and you, your children can be educated. Mm. And, you know, the reason for that is because you have the commitment mm -hmm. and you have the quality of okay. what needs to be taught. Right. Okay. Yes, our building is an enhancement, mm -hmm. but now being in the system for so long, I realize mm -hmm. making a beautiful building doesn't all do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's about the quality in that in that right. building. Right. All right. Okay. You can put labels and things. Right. You can do all different kind of dress up. Right. But if the quality right it's not there, it's not there. You still have that failing. Okay. And the point is that it's really important for parents. And when I talk education, I don't just talk it for one side of town. It's, it, it's for the whole city. It's about what quality are we putting out there for our children. And it has to come from the beginning. Most time, we know that mm. in, in studies, mm. education starts at home. Exactly. Before, home. when that little baby is out there, little baby, right. you know, you need to be talking to that child. You need to be doing everything to encourage that right. motor for that that right. baby to be able right. to, you know. I, I I have some little kids that lives next door to me, and this three year old still talking like a a baby. Da 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 da. And I'm saying, honey, you need to start teaching those kids words right. so they can make mention exactly. of those words. Exactly. Okay, because now that child go to school, and what's gonna happen? The teacher is puzzled now or having a hard time addressing because exactly. this kid is not. She, Stop being developed. No. Right. So w a parent needs to do more, okay, before that child actually go to school. Read to your child. Do everything you can, you know. But it, it is hard when you have 30-something kids or 20-something kids and one teacher has to try to blend all those kids, getting them to learn. But I think the read aloud stuff is really good. Right. Trying to get kids to, you know, to to read even though sometimes the word not may not be in it but you know what if children use their imagination right you'd be surprised to see how fast they can learn about things just give them a book we're gonna stop on that point right now we're gonna take a little break um, and we'll come back we pick that back up we'll be right back we we'll have to pay a few bills um, How do you judge a law firm's success? Cases won, money made, or what the firm does in the community? At Dressler Strickland, we know that success is just the beginning. The true measure of success is what you do with it. For 33 years, we've used our success to help our neighbors and our community. 24-7, 11-22. Whenever you need us, we'll be there. Dressler Strickland, building communities one case at a time. we read, then Coco Key. What time is it? Time to read! 
It's always time to read. Make Education and Hartford Public Schools declare reading a team sport and award a fun soak celebration at Coco Key Water Resort to the school with the most books read. Your achievement level is displayed by Make Education Time to Read wristbands. Motivate, stimulate, educate. Make Education makes it fun. Puerto Rico Discovery Month. Did Columbus realize the enormity of his discovery? The art, the history, the literature, the people, the music. Puerto Rico Discovery Month. It's for everyone to enjoy. Welcome back to Education One. We have a real powerful mover and shaker with me today. Uh, her name is Hyacin Yeti. She's an activist. She's head of the NRZ in Maple Avenue. She's an educator, and I've been knowing this woman for a ton of years, and she's a breath of information. Come, come so on. let's get back to where mm -hmm. I wanted. To, I, I want to get. I want to stay focused on you know parents and their involvement in mm -hmm. children's life. And I know we beat this dead horse in the head for ever and ever, but until we can get our parents to start understanding how valuable education is mm -hmm. to their children, okay? Mm -hmm. To them, it's, it should be important. Right. But if not for me as a parent, let me have it for my children. Right. Because their future depends on how involved as a parent they were to their children. All right. You're saying it because your two daughters and sons are very successful. Right. And and, and because I have the experience, I exactly. figure and any parents and I and I remember all the parents that was with my children's um, class. Right. They were really committed parents. Right. They were there. We their were there. kids were their kids was well educated. Right. And the point is that they were quality education. Right. And even so we were pushing for more, you know? And um but now we're at the point where First of all, the superintendent came in and you know gotten rid of all the good teachers that were there. Uh, as I say again, their Craig has grabbed up a lot of them because Craig know the value right. of good teachers. Right. So now we're left with the Teacher of Merit Corps kids, and you know they really not really all that committed. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you have this these kids, these teachers who are teaching some of them. That saying, okay, I just want to do my year and two, and I'm gone because you know I have to put this beautiful thing on my resume that mm -hmm. I teach in urban setting. Right. All right, but the point is when you look at the quality of the education that's been put out there, mm -hmm. and again we've gone to the school board and we've said, look, we need to see more rigor within mm -hmm. our school setting. Right. All right, and let's start it from kindergarten. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. and. If we can start it there and get the focus on teaching, mm -hmm. what let's go back to let's go back to uh, comprehension, you know, let's go back to really educating children. Let me ask you this. Now in the last say ten years, maybe less than that, say five years, how many teachers have we lost in Hartford? Oh just, just we've lost like, maybe we've lost probably I would say like seventy percent of the good teachers. So they're gone. And they got oh, they're gone. They're, they're gone. To, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. gone somewhere else or gone to crack. Because mm -hmm. you know what? And most times when they leave, they're saying, "Well, here's what's going on." The superintendent is telling principals to devaluate teachers. You know, evaluation make them look bad if they're not willing to just go. Right. And this is not a joke. This is reality. Right. All right. And a lot of these good teachers mm -hmm. were pushed right out the system right because they didn't want to be devaluated as they're not good or stuff like that so before that happens they decide well you know what i won't fight with these people because you know they don't appreciate me right, right all right? Right, right but who is who is the one that getting hurt at the end of the day mm -hmm. our children Mm -hmm. Okay, because poor that Mrs. Brown that used to be so committed to our children, all she needed was that the resource to do her job, right. but the resource was not there. Okay, mm -hmm. and she tried to do the best she can with what she got, mm -hmm. and yet she decided, well, you know, if I have to go through all this aggravation, and somebody else need me out there that will right. appreciate me, let me go there. Well, you know, you know what the puzzling part about it is is. 
we was grandfathered in by Arnie Duncan, and Connecticut was failing for the last three, well, four years now since Barack got back in. And my whole thing right now, how I look at the system in Connecticut as a whole, it's all about money, not the child. Yeah, it's not about the child. And, and you know, when the Bush came in and said, we want to do this no child left behind, mm -hmm. that was the worst policy, worst, worst. Because we left more children behind than we have ever before in life. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the reason is, you don't put, you don't put a policy in place without any support. Mm -hmm. All right? You expect me to do this, but you don't give me the right resources. So it's just like that. The federal government do that. And then our system, Hartford, does the same thing. Right. All right? And I'm not saying everything is perfect because other towns have any issues too when it comes to education because mm -hmm. they see their quality has fallen down. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because too much things are catering around the tests. Okay, we got to get these kids ready for the test. Mm -hmm. And what is in that test? You know, you just bubble things in. There's no more critical thinking right. of our children anymore. We have this computer age, and all we do is get on the computer and da-da-da. Mm -hmm. We don't have thinking kids anymore. Right. Okay? All they ever think about is my computer. can give it to me quick. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I'll go about it. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell us yet? And I know we're in a computer age and, and we have to go with the flow. But we need the basics. Mm -hmm. Basics is really important. Computer is important, but the basics also important. When, when, um, when Pastor Nair and I started um, the after school program at the New Temple of God, um, she said it's much more than actually education. It's really a social economic need. But when I looked at the kids coming in from elementary to high school, coming back and forth, there was a phobia. They were afraid of something that they just didn't know. Well, you so, so they wasn't prepared. So when they got pushed along from the second to the fifth to the ninth grade, they were still four grades behind. Well, of course. Because, again, children just doesn't learn by sitting at a desk. Mm -hmm. You know, there is that social development. There is all different kind of a development for a child mm -hmm. so that child can learn. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting it from the basic down there at that early age, mm -hmm. then you're lacking. Yep. So when you get to that kindergarten, okay, you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Now, Mrs. Brown, the teacher has to get on her hands and knees and try to get every little Johnny or little Janie to know this and know that, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And they do not give that teacher the time mm -hmm. to concentrate on these little children right. that right. needs that work. So because of that, they have to be rushing through everything, right. all right? And if a little Janie did come in and didn't know that little ABC or know the coloring and all those kind of things, mm -hmm. sorry, you don't have enough time. How many days in the, in the year do you have? Because they say we have 180 days, but in real, we really don't have 180 days. days so because of all the things that's happening, right. you don't have 180, 180 days, days to educate those children. Right. So because of that, you're really losing out on a lot of stuff. Right. So it's really important for, for parents to understand how important it is to start molding their children from early. Right. So when they get to school, they're prepared. Right. Okay. Socially, emotionally, and every way. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can, you know, be ready to to learn, and and what it is you're gonna learn. Children should learn the basic again. I um. When I look back and I develop a curriculum, and I'm not a curriculum specialist, but I know what the kids want. I try to take what they really like into a science into financial literacy because most kids I look at are, are dirt poor. I mean when I when I grew up, um, I grew up with the nuns and the priests, with St. Augustine's in the Bronx. Then I came and went to, you know, St. Augustine's, I mean uh, Northwest Catholic and I hung out at Kingswood and different schools and I went to Howard and Morgan and I centered myself around, I played basketball, I played sports, but I also hung around with teachers that also was actually, how do you actually make money or how do you develop a, a business plan? And we have a lot of financial literacy programs out there like High School Inc. And I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it what it is because the guy left Windsor 
and came to Hartford about three years ago. But I looked at some of the stuff that this particular school is doing, and there is a, a, a bank outside of it to teach them, but it's not really teaching anything. Well, this is exactly what I said That's about... Crazy. This, is, this is what I'm saying. It's just a waste of time you and money. Put, you put the label in these things, but it right. doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. Okay? It's just like we have the Nursing Academy, Law Academy. What does all that mean? Right. Green technology. And I'm saying, well, when are we going to do something about those kids? Right, right. Children need to be well-rounded. Right. And they can be. Right. If the if teachers have the time to get all these things in place. Right. Because, and not only teacher, parents. Parents can take their kids to the library. They can take them to the science museum. They can take them to different places to see other things. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how poor you are. Trust me. I was poor, okay? Mm -hmm. I was rich in love, but I was I didn't have money thrown out there that exactly. I could, you know, go big places and do all that. But I still make sure that my children's life is going to be different from mine. Exactly. So I'm I'm praying and I'm hoping that our parents can start thinking that way. My life was not that big and rich and poor and and and, and whatever. But I want to make sure my children come out on the better end. I developed a program in Hartford, several programs in Hartford, and several programs have been picked apart. And I said to the group that this past year when Pastor Lanier died, she died last August, I said, I will not do another project in Hartford and because the political system is thick and you gotta weave your way through it. We'll not waste another penny. This is what I will do. I will do a project somewhere else and work backwards, sometimes going backwards to go forward. Yeah, so, if, if you don't get through here, you try another place, yeah, okay? Because and be surprised if you have that great success there. You back. can come back and say, hey, look, look what exactly. I've done here. Right. So give me that chance to do that. Right. But a lot of our children need that. They need mentorship, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. They need that little kick, little help, mm -hmm. all right? And if they can get that, since they don't per perhaps have a stable home life, mm -hmm. it's really important for us to take that, you know, challenge and, and kind of mentor some of these kids. Right. Encourage them to do the right thing. Let them see that, you know, life can get better for them mm -hmm. if they do the right thing. I, I think that, you know, to put a conclusion almost to this program, because we're actually running out of time a little bit, and I've been bringing this up to everyone, I like to do a forum. And I know that's a, a, a huge problem. Well, that's something you have to plan. Yeah, that's, and, that's and a, that's what a, is the focus? Right, yeah. that's a huge problem. But if we can actually do something as the focus or the mission as parents, and it's always going to be around education with both of us. You know that already. But Hartford has not done nothing that I know of since I've been living or stayed in Hartford or even worked in Hartford. And something is really lacking because... If we're spending anywhere between fifteen and sixteen thousand dollars per child, and it's X number of children in Hartford, and we have a PTO or a PTA, and it's not as strong as it's supposed to be, and you've been to these meetings, I mean, more so than I stopped going. <laughs> how can we actually take because it starts at home. It always starts at home. How can we take the parents or the young parents? Because at Hartford High, they have a daycare. And I learned that about five years ago. I never knew they had a daycare like this. And they have kids going with kids going to school. And it's a new, unique project or unique program within the Hartford school system. But is it really helping? Well, and, and, and it goes back to that. I said, look, and I go into the nursery some of the time. And I right. said, um, and I mentioned it to somebody in the city. And I said, look, is this program a babysitting position yeah. or is it a child development program? Because, right. you know, children need to learn at an early age. age exactly. Okay? I, I just happened to pick up a, a little kid someplace that I went to a couple of weeks ago. Right. And I said to the parent, and a young parent, no more than about 20, uh, 22. Right. Two kids. Okay. And I said to her, how old is the baby? Eight months. I said, well, what is the baby doing? Nothing. I said, what do you do with the baby? Put the baby down. I want to see whether the baby can crawl or whatever. Right. Oh, no, he won't do nothing. I said, why is that so? Yeah. I said, look, I'm going to put the baby here. Here's what you're going to do. Right. You sing and clap for that baby. Right. Okay? Right. I put the baby down, start clapping and singing. Right. And, and you'll be surprised. That baby start clapping. Right. But I'm saying this is what the parents need to do. They need to understand right. that they don't have a little baby as a handbag anymore right. Right. and don't teach these little babies anything. Because it, it starts from that 
Right. You know, age. Right. You got to speak to your children. You got to be active, doing things, so they can feel that. I mean, you're saying it's it's education, but like a health educational type of program. Well, and and in a, and, and in a sense, it is because if we're talking about an infant and in stages from zero to eight years and all that, it's a combination of everything. Everything. And, but the crazy part about this is Mrs. H. Even though we're having young parents right here between the ages of 15 and 19, how can we take a light-minded person into a person that is actually our age now into a serious-minded person and says, guess what? This has to start here. Right. We're not waiting for the system. This is what we got to do. No funding. Whatever how we make off the state or what we're doing part-time. And this is something, like I said, this is something that has to be addressed in Hartford. It's a huge project to put on as a pilot or actually a forum, but it has to be done. Well, there's a lot to. of, right now, there's a lot of attempt to do right. parent university, parent this and parent right. that. Right. But the thing is that everybody's trying to do their own little thing. Exactly. And there's so much disconnect. Right. You know, so what needs to happen is we need to figure out. How to put it all together. We can bring all those people together, together. Right. and say, hey. How are we doing this? Okay, we're training parents. What kind of training is it that right. we're training parents? We got to empower parents right. to feel that power, right. that knowing that I have my daughter, my son, and I want more. I want right. better. I want my children to be good. I want them to have, you know, good profession. I want them to have paid jobs when they become adults or stuff like that. Right. We have to have that same vision. Right. Okay? It's not about, well, it's my little piece of pie over here and I'm getting this money so b let me bring the parents in and say I'm training. Right. Indeed, what kind of training is it? Mm -hmm. That's another deed. Okay? Right. Right. And that's why sometimes I kind of step back from some of these groups because I know it's all about what they make for themselves. It's not really about how am I empowering parents? Yeah. Because sometimes they really don't want the person who is in power right. to tell these parents about empowerment. Right. Okay? So sometimes I have an a, a issue with that. Right. You know? We have 30 seconds left. What, what would you like to say to the viewers? Well, I'm hoping that um, viewers understand that education is wide. It's a big thing. And it takes more than just that one individual to educate a child you know so reaching out to more and more people to help to make his or her child become that productive citizen of this of this world um you know that was need to happen but you as a individual parents need to find ways and means to find out how i can be empowered okay to make those kind of change for for your children all right and and, and i'm here to help anyone who needs that help because since I have the experience, right. I think, you know, I know, I know you do. but again, you know, I put it out there. Right. It's okay if anyone right. wants to take the, the challenge. But the point is, I like to make parents feel empowered. I like to open doors so people can get in mm -hmm. and, and see what opportunity is there for them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I will continue to do. We're going we're gonna to be doing some things uh, next year. We're going to bring you back. Uh, we brought you back twice this year. Next year, we'll probably bring you back anywhere between January and February. There's some new uh, projects and some initiatives that uh, MC Square is doing uh, with around in the Harford area. And um, we're going we're gonna to go from there. I'd like to thank the viewers in the last several weeks of tuning in. You made this show possible for us. And uh, we're going to see you next week on Education One. My name is Sam Cephas, host of Education One. I'll see you on the internet. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.